who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Amen. Thank you, Neil. Thank you. We're continuing our series, House of Prayer, this morning as we uh, journey through the, the Lord's Prayer uh, uh, together. And this morning, your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's not a parrot prayer. It's not a parrot prayer. It's a pattern of prayer. And in just these few words, Jesus teaches us to be intercessors, to bridge the gap that exists between heaven and earth, by our prayers, intercession, that is to pray for others and for other situations outside of ourselves. So rise up intercessors. We need intercessors as never before, young and old, to pray for God's church, to pray for this nation, to pray for this world. Rise up, intercessors. I love uh, what William Temple, uh, a previous Archbishop of Canterbury, once said. He said uh, about prayer, they, they tell me it's just coincidence. Yet when I pray, coincidences happen. And when I don't, they don't. <laughs> For the church for the nation, for the needs of this desperate, needy world, for friends, for colleagues, for difficult situations, for stresses and pressures and problems. Intercession for others is the most powerful resource at your disposal. It's the most powerful resource because it connects us with the most powerful person in the universe. I was reminded of um, Samuel in the Old Testament and uh, uh, at the end of his ministry and what he said in a, a, a farewell speech to the people of Israel recorded in 1 Samuel 12 and verse 23. He said, Far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by failing to pray for you. Let's not fail to pray for others in in their need. Let's not fail to pray for our nation, for our church, for our world. Let's uh, commit ourselves to a uh, a divine power. Because um, to pray your kingdom come is to pray for God's rule and reign to be established in that situation and uh, in our world. Uh, God's kingdom is his rule and reign uh, in this world. Jesus demonstrated it. Jesus demonstrated the the presence and the reality of the kingdom of God as he began his ministry by proclaiming the kingdom of heaven is near. And, And through his healing and through his teaching and through his sacrificial death and resurrection, he proclaimed, he demonstrated that the kingdom of God had broken into this world. And as in his ministry, praying 
for the kingdom to be realized on earth, to come, means that we'll pray for people to be converted, means that we'll pray for people to be healed, means that we'll pray for people to be set free from things that bind them, means that we'll pray for people to be filled with God's Holy Spirit in a new way, means that we'll pray for people to know that injustice and suffering and inequality in this world is not the last word. For God's kingdom is coming. It's coming today in answer to people's prayers and it's coming tomorrow as finally one day uh, he establishes his kingdom upon earth. Your kingdom come. I love that song that we've um, already used in in worship this morning. Um, I see the king of glory. Did you notice that, that line in that song? It says, break my heart with what breaks yours. Everything I am for your kingdom's cause. And to pray your kingdom come is is the same thing. It's actually to care about what God cares about. It's to get indignant about those things that God is indignant about. Uh, To get inspired to pray led by his spirit. To get informed about a particular situation for which we need to pray. And whenever we can as well to get together to pray because where two or three are gathered in his name, there is a particular power in our prayers. For there he is in the midst. Pete Gregg wonderfully put it in the prayer course that we're using in our life groups. He said, the hinge of history... The hinge of history is the bended knee. Do you believe that? And, and notice, that, notice that it's your or, or thy. <laughs> it's, it's your kingdom come and not mine or yours. <laughs> you know, sometimes our little kingdoms our little empires that we like to build for ourselves, our little kingdoms can come into conflict with his greater kingdom. So may we have eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts that are open to respond. As God comes near, as his kingdom takes another step in this world of ours, as we punch holes in the darkness by our praying, by our intercession, as we call to the Lord, your kingdom come today. Your kingdom come. Commit yourself to a divine power, his rule and his reign within our world. And surrender yourself. As we've been singing, I surrender. Surrender yourself to a divine purpose. When, when you pray your will be done on earth as in heaven, we're committing ourselves to the purposes of God. It, and it's not, it's not resignation. It's... It's a releasing of the burdens that so often we, we, we carry in ourselves. It's not trying to change God's mind. Prayer is not trying to change God's mind. It's saying amen to God's will being done. It's not about what we want, it's about what he wants. It's about releasing the blessing to other people in our world through intercession for them. 
And so when we're willing to surrender to his purposes, when we're, when we're ready to trust him, we can know that he will, he will work it out for the good. He will. When we surrender to him, when we trust him, when we trust his divine purpose, praying your will be done on heaven, in earth as in, as in heaven. I do think we need to get serious about this intercession business. Do you know, for some of us, uh, for some of us, I think our British reserve doesn't, doesn't do us any favours when we come to prayer. There needs to be a, a serious pleading to influence the shape of the future in other people's lives and in our, our world. If you want to participate in seeing the will of God being done on earth as in heaven, then you need to feel it in your heart. Not, oh Lord, please bring peace in the world. Amen. You need to feel it in your heart. I know that many of us will struggle with what we... Um, think to be unanswered prayer. Personally, I'm glad that God doesn't answer all my prayers with a yes. If he did, I'd be married to Julia Roberts several times. <laughs> and you know, uh, you know it wouldn't be good for me. <laughs> you know, God says no. God, God says wait. God says to Actually, I have another purpose. It's one that you don't understand. I have an eternal purpose. His ways are, are higher than ours, and his wisdom is, is eternal when ours is so limited by this space and time. And that's why we need to surrender to his purpose to trust his hands, to pray, your will, Lord, not, not mine, your will, Lord, be done in my life and on earth as in heaven. Your will, Lord, be done. Commit yourself to the divine power, his rule and his reign, the coming of his kingdom. Surrender yourself to a divine purpose, knowing that we can, we can trust his, his wisdom above our own. And believe, believe yourself to be in a, a divine partnership uh, with him. I was, just, um, I was just a young minister in Ipswich at the time. Uh, and one morning I had a phone call and... I heard from a couple church members that their son in the night had taken a rifle and shot himself by a lake, actually, that they owned. And as I drove out to that situation, I was so, I was so, wondering what I'd say to them in that desperate, desperate situation. And do you know, as I, I drove, it's a few miles outside of Ipswich, I had an overwhelming sense <laughs> that Jesus was praying for me. <laughs> Have you ever had that? An overwhelming sense that Jesus was praying for me and for this situation. Martin, I, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for Alan and Helen, parents, and you very well. I, I'm holding you up before the Father's throne just now, Martin. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I'm with you. And that, that experience uh, convinced me more than ever that prayer is not just about me saying things to God, but that prayer is the divine partnership. For, for God has designed us to, to pray in partnership with him, to, to listen as well as to speak. 
Romans 8, as we heard read by Anil, puts it, uh, verse 26, it says, We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. The Spirit intercedes for us in accordance with God's will. And we find it hard to pray when we're not sure what to pray for, when we feel really weak. Let's be aware that he can pray for us in, in, word, in, in groans, it says there, that, that words cannot express in, in wordless groans. <laughs> And he can pray in, in a perfect knowledge of the Father's will, in accordance with God's will. He can uphold us as we try to pray for others. He can, he can intercede on our behalf as well. Interceding for those who trust in him before the Father's throne. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven, committing ourselves to a divine power that we might see his rule and reign being established more as a result of our intercession. Surrendering ourselves to a divine purpose that we might be able to say, yes, Lord, I trust you beyond my limited wisdom. I surrender to your perfect purpose. And believing yourself to be in a divine partnership with God as we pray. Because he's praying for you as well. We so need intercessors. <laughs> So rise up, intercessors. Sometimes older people say to me that, uh, oh, they can't do much anymore because uh, they're not as active, able to be anymore. Rise up, intercessors, and pray. Let's be a people of prayer. Let's be a house of prayer for all nations. Let's see his kingdom being established on earth. His rule and his reign. Let's see his purposes and his plans being worked out, not yours or mine. And let's know that he holds us up before the Father's throne. <laughs> yes? Is it true? Amen. Let it be more true in our hearts and lives and in this church. Rise up, intercessors. Amen. Oh Lord, help us. Help us because we are weak people. Lord, we find it hard to find the time to, to pray sometimes, let alone have the desire. And Lord, would you help us, would you inspire us, even this week, even this day, to be more of an intercessor. And as we practice it, Lord, may we uh, learn it more. <laughs> Lord, help us to be able to pray with meaning and understanding. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Amen.